People reach out to me all the time asking my opinion for what are the best value complications watches. And every single time I have a pretty succinct list in terms of what I recommend to people. So today I wanted to present to you my top five best value watch complications on the market today. So let's get right into it. Starting first with the GMT complication. Now, the most iconic GMT watch has to be the Rolex GMT. However, this is a watch that is nearly impossible to get new at retail without a purchase history. And of course, most people simply don't want to pay the premiums on the secondary market that it commands. And so let's talk about what I feel is the best value GMT watch that isn't a Rolex. It's actually an Omega Seamaster. It's the reference 2538.20 made for the 50th anniversary of the Omega Seamaster. That's a watch that comes in at a case diameter of 41 millimeters, a thickness of 13.5 millimeters, a water resistance rating of 300 meters, which actually beats out the Rolex GMT, and it has the automatic Omega caliber 1128, which is essentially just an ETA 2892 movement with an additional 24 hour hand attached, and comes at a market price of $3,500. For the value that you're getting, you're getting an Omega Seamaster 300 meters, an iconic design, timeless design, super recognizable by watch collectors. And this is a price point at $3,500, which is below the current retail of an Omega Seamaster 300. And you get that added functionality of the GMT hand, which I think is amazing. I love particularly this reference with the white dial. However, you can also get one in a black dial, different reference, same watch. Uh, but I like the white dial a little bit more because for a sports watch, it's hard to find a good looking white dial sports watch. And I think this is actually a really good looking one. And not to mention, I think it just adds a little bit more variety compared to the traditional black dial watches most people are accustomed to. So overall, you get an iconic design, a GMT complication, not to mention, of course, that incredible wave dial from Omega and the brand itself having, you know, some of the most reliable movements. This one using an ETA 2892 easy and great for serviceability and keeps the cost down. I think it's one of those amazing watches for watch collectors to look out for because these deals are actually being scooped up and prices are going up every single year on these where I saw them previously trading at the 2,500 or less price point, which is just, again, an insane value. But even at 3,500, I think it is just one of those amazing deals from Omega you definitely should look out for. One of my favorite complications is a moon face because of just simply how romantic and how elegant of a complication it is. It's something that when executed really well helps to not only accentuate the watch and its overall aesthetic, but really elevates it to that next level, making it look far more expensive than it actually is. And what I feel is the best value moon phase watch out there is actually the Cartier Drive moon phase. This is a watch that comes in at a case diameter of 40 millimeters, a thickness of 12.15 millimeters, a water resistance of 30 meters, is powered by the caliber 1904 LUMC, which is both an automatic and an in-house caliber from Cartier and has a market price of $6,000, roughly speaking. Now, this is an absolutely timeless design from Cartier, in my opinion, and one of their most overlooked designs is, I think it's just one of those elegant designs that really helps to bring the users kind of focus in on that actual mood phase down at six o'clock, which I think is really, really nicely done. Especially at the $6,000 price point from a brand like Cartier, the value that you're getting, the iconic design that you're getting, and of course the history that you're getting from the Cartier brand and their dress watches, but also just in terms of the overall aesthetic of the watch, I think it's an absolutely knockout and one of those underrated gems out there that collectors should definitely look out for. In terms of value chronographs, specifically manual wind chronographs, typically the choice is an Omega Speedmaster. And I would be hard pressed to disagree with that because it is not only an iconic design, but an iconic watch in and of itself. But if you're looking for something a little bit higher level, finished to a higher degree, it's actually quite hard to find a manual wind chronograph for a great price, except for this one that I personally just actually bought from my own collection. And it is a Mont Blanc model pusher chronograph. Does a watch that comes in at 40 millimeters with a thickness of 12.15 millimeters, a water resistance of 30 meters, is powered by the Minerva 1321, which is an in-house Minerva movement owned by Mont Blanc or owned by the Richemont Group rather, and is manual winding and carries a market price of roughly $20,000. This watch features a Minerva caliber, uh, which actually is manual winding and a mono pusher chronograph for a fraction of the price that you would otherwise find the same complication and the same level of finishing from an other brand making this complication. 
Now there's a ton of variety you can get in these Mont Blanc Mono Pusher Corner Guys, but really I just want to shed some light on just how great a value you're getting. The finishing is top level. When you look at this through a microscope, you can tell that a watchmaker has sat there and finished and beveled and angled every single piece of this movement. And not to mention the fact that the complication, it being a mono pusher chronograph, simply isn't available at this high of a level from other brands at this price point. Simply put, it's one of those rare unicorn value plays that you can get high horology on a budget with the pedigree of Minerva movements inside of it. I thought it was a surefire pick and Mont Blanc being one of my favorite, if not my favorite luxury brand out there, it was a surefire addition to my collection. And again, one of those underrated sleepers that people really aren't paying enough attention to. There's a ton of variety and variation you can get in terms of dial design and even case diameter. And so you can really choose the one that suits your personality and your collection best. And I think that makes it an even better pickup. Now, I already mentioned the Omega Speedmaster as a chronograph, but what about a non-manual winding chronograph? What is the best value play chronograph out there, period? Well, if I was to pick one, it would actually be the Zenith El Primero Chronomaster Triple Date Calendar Chronograph. Now, that's a whole mouthful. Essentially, just to tell you, it's a Zenith El Primero with a triple calendar and a moon phase. Now, there's a watch that comes in at 40 millimeters with a thickness of 13 millimeters. The movement is the Zenith 410 Automatic, which is essentially just the Zenith El Primero with an added module for the triple calendar and a moon phase. 50 hour power reserve and carries a market price of about $5,000. Considering this entire mix of complications, not only is executed at a really, really nice level, but at a price point that is actually quite affordable given what it is, it's incredible to think that this is still a slept on watch. Now this was such a great watch that actually Zenith re-released a modern adaptation to it in the newer reference that I think is actually an even nicer aesthetically looking watch, but the price points are still a little bit high but it's one that I look out for in the future if deals do come up and deals will certainly come up because Zenith is one of those underappreciated brands on the market that unfortunately does fall tremendously in value on the secondary. Now, as for this one specifically, again, it's one of those value plays considering the complication. Triple calendar with, of course, that El Primero chronograph pedigree and a moon phase on top of it. It's a surefire winner in my book and definitely one of the best value chronographs one can get given the complication and also given just the incredible history there with the Zenith El Primero movement. And last but certainly not least is a mix of complication. What is that kind of ultimate watch, ultimate value play that combines a huge mix of complications? And for me, the answer is actually quite simple. It's a little bit off the beaten path, not your typical choice, but it is the IWC Da Vinci Perpetual Calendar Reference 3570. This is a watch that comes in at 39 millimeters in diameter, absolutely perfect case size, has a thickness of 14.3 millimeters, is powered by the IWC caliber 79261 and of course has a power reserve of 44 hours and a market price under $10,000. Now again, I was just talking about pedigree and history and all that kind of good stuff that people look for in terms of a value play, right? And this has it all. Not only does it have the incredible perpetual calendar module of Kirk Claus in this watch, but it also combines a chronograph with it. So you get both a perpetual calendar and a chronograph in an automatic movement. And of course you're getting it all under $10,000 from a brand like IWC. I think it's a surefire winner. And when it comes to value play, I don't know if it gets better than this. Pedigree, history, and of course, just the overall look of the watch, it being so unique. I think it's a complete package in terms of being the ultimate value play out there on the market. So guys, this is my top five list for the ultimate value plays in terms of a mix of complications. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. I'd love to get your feedback and love to know what you think are some of the most undervalued watches out there on the market for collectors to be had. It's always great to hear your feedback. If you like this type of video, I'd really appreciate if you like it, you subscribe for more in the future. And of course, let me know down in the comments any videos you'd like to see from me in the future. My name is Marco from Burdine's Jewelry and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.